So for a while now, I've been using this code spell checker extension in Visual Studio Code, and it does things like highlight, oh, hey, I misspelled this, and we can go and fix it, right? And I was thinking to myself, wouldn't this be great if we could automate this into maybe a git push or a, a git commit or into the pipeline? And there's a package that, that this is based off of so called cspell, and it's an NPM package. It's, it's, it's uh, relatively popular. It's got 21 thousand weekly downloads what i'm going to do is show you some configuration how to get it started in your project and now we can make sure that we don't have any spelling issues in our application which can be frustrating oftentimes typos are a very common part of uh debugging and a common part of uh of issues in your application it also can help enforce things like camel case or um, proper casing by the fact that it doesn't know what you're spelling properly so let's go ahead and showcase that and get it set up in our project here <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. I've been partnering up with Dev Mountain for a couple of years now, and I've had the chance to see multiple campuses and housing. I've been really impressed. Dev Mountain has a couple different programs from web dev to iOS development, software QA, and UX design. Some are after hours part-time programs, and some are fully immersive programs where they actually include housing at no additional cost so you can get up and go. If you're interested in finding out more, there's a link in the description below. Now, one thing to note is you don't have to use the C spell uh, extension if you're not using Visual Studio Code, but um, the C spell extension extension will show you uh, where your issues are, uh, so it makes it a little bit you know catch it in the act versus uh, post post mortem. Is that, that correct? I don't know. But uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this C spell library here. Now, this is gonna go ahead and uh, just be the dependency and actually I, I always do this but that needs to <laughs> that needs to go as a dev dependency um, that's not going to be a hard dependency so in just a second here where is C spell let's just go ahead and move this down to our dev dependency because this is really something we only care about um, during development all right now that we've done that we can do something very cool so let's go ahead and add a script and we'll call it spell check so, um, right, uh, and you might be saying, well, why are you calling it spell check versus C spell, right? Well, when you write your scripts, you typically want it to reflect the name. The name wants to reflect its intent, right? It's like a variable to a degree. So you want to make sure that the intent of this is clear. You may have an idea what C spell means, but you may not actually know what it is. So to get C spell to run, we need to do a couple things. One, we can just run it. So you're like, okay, cool. This runs to be C spell. Let's see what happens, right? You're going to see that it's not going to do exactly what we think it's going to do. So we're going to npm run uh, C spell. So give this one second. Uh, missing script. Oh, excuse me. npm run C spell. And actually, what we wanted to do was npm run spell check anyhow. So there that goes. And you're going to get an issue here. And this issue is uh, missing script C spell. Um, now, what's happening here is that if we look at the documentation, that we need to actually go and and reference what this is. And I I think I also need to do this one more time since I put it in the wrong spot. But we need to reference the route, the root level route that we want to go to. So. In our case here, we want to go to basically anything that's nested in source. That's usually how I do it, is we care what's going on in source. We don't necessarily want to spell check our editor config or anything else. We want to know what's in our main application. So to do that, we'll simply do, put a space here, some quotes. We'll do source slash star star. So basically everything that's in source. Now, if we run our spell check, uh, missing script C spell. What's going on here? Oh, I'm sorry. I put this in the wrong spot. Here we go. Going crazy here. All right. So files checked zero issues found zero and zero. So obviously something's not working. 
Now, if we look back real quick, we might need to do it like this. Source, source, slash. Save it one more time. NPM runs spell check. So it's not picking up that. Let's actually get rid of these quotes and see if this is part of the problem. There we go. Um, no quotes necessary. So you can see we have all these words that are, uh, it doesn't know what the hell we're talking about. Sign up, YT subscribe, channel ID. We have something in here called LFCQ, which is uh, something else. So uh, you can see right now it's doing our HTML and CSS. But this is working. At this point, if we wanted to go down to our Husky Git hooks, uh, which you can watch in another video how we set this up, we could do nn run npm run uh, spell check. And I'll include that video in the uh, description below. But we could add this now so that this is running automatically. We also have this script that if we wanted to put in our Docker file later later on or something like that or a deployment app, we would run this and it wouldn't merge if there's a spelling issue. But now you're saying, okay, well, some of these words may be valid. Some of these words may be things that we want to actually keep. Now, uh, to do that, what we want to do is we want to go and add some configuration. And we do that with a cspell.config or dot json excuse me uh c spell not c pell and let me copy over some stuff here Doo -doo -doo. this is the main things that you're going to care about so when we paste this in here it always has this version and the language that you're checking against and then we have some ignore paths and words so the thing that you want to uh, no, is uh, what words we want to skip over. So let's say that we didn't want to worry about polyfills.ts, right? I don't actually want to spell check polyfills.ts. So we could add a path here that basically said um, uh, dot dot. Uh, actually, we'll just do this polyfills.ts. Uh, value expected. What is it complaining about? All right. So now, if we go and run our thing, what we should see is that unexpected token. Oh, is that what it wants? I forgot we're in a JSON. What's it complaining about? JSON with commas. JSON. All right. And let's take these comments out, comments out, comments out, comments out. Now we run it, and you'll see that we don't have our polyfills in here anymore, which makes sense, right? Uh, we don't want to really do it. Another issue that I've had in the past that I often include is anything that's in our assets folder. And you can see we can put a regular expression. Now we don't have that issue in here because there aren't really any assets. Um, but this is usually what I end up doing, throw it on there. Anything that's has a assets directory, ignore that. Okay, but this is how we're gonna actually just straight up ignore directories and paths. Now, there's also words that we may want to ignore or even entire folder structures. So you can go ahead and do something like this where you're like, you know what? I don't really want to deal with my SAS files. This isn't something I think is necessary to spell check. Now, I typically like to have it on everything. So you can start seeing like, for instance, in YouTube, font awesome. This is something that, do I want to add font or fort awesome? Not necessarily, but what you can do is you can go ahead and do this like you would do with TS Lint. So you can disable lines. I don't want to add font awesome or fort awesome to my validated words that were say, hey, don't spell check, but we can do this, disable, and that'll disable the whole file. And then if we do something like next line, uh, no, that's not it. What is next line? There we go. Disable dash next line. So you can see now if we did something like that, it's only this line. And if we were to double import this right here, it's, it's good to go and vice versa. So you can disable individual lines and we don't need this 
extra colon on the end here. But this gives us the ability to disable just a single line. It works exactly like TSLAN, and it's all in the documentation. But now that we go ahead and run this, you'll see our Fort Awesome, Font Awesome is good. But let's say that we want to add some words. For instance, YouTube is a word that we might want to add to our application to say, hey, ignore this, and bam, bam. Run this like so, and bam, no more YouTube, right? And this is a uh, case insensitive, but so we can start going through our whole application and seeing we, where these errors are and what we want to do and how we want to handle it. But the important part is we have the ability to spell check. Now, what do I recommend? I don't recommend that you go and start uh, correcting these things, right? Like you can see right here, we actually found a bug in my personal website courses. Now, there are things like Udemy. It doesn't know what Udemy is, so these are proper names, right? So there's certain proper names that, okay, cool. It's not going to know what Udemy is, but this is a proper word. It's not going to know what Scrimba is, which is another proper name, so we'll add Scrimba. It's not going to know what Thinkster is, so we'll add Thinkster. And uh, let's go ahead and save it, run it. Cool. Now... We also have the ability, if we wanted to, turn off. So say, hey, we, we don't want to do SAS files, and we don't want to do HTML files, uh, because this is something I had to do in a project where there's just too many misnamed classes. And uh, now uh, we can ignore those files for the time being. Not something I recommend, but something that does happen. So we go and we take this. At this point, we can actually delete this. This was an example. And then you're going to go through your app and add it to where you need and whatnot. But that's how easy it is to get up and running with our C spell, spell check. So I, I just wanted to showcase a few more things. You can see here they give you an example of how to do a uh, Git hook. But the the items that we had in there that we showcased uh, with our C spell show, showed uh, quite a few quite a few examples but there are a few other things so there are ways to turn on our in our configuration words that should always be changed uh, so something that you want to go out of your way to make sure it doesn't get in the application there are ways to disable uh, just certain words or next lines there are ways to which we showcase to ignore here would be like hey ignore zoom but for whatever reason like something so stupid you don't want to add it to the sort of the, the config but something that you just this one file let's add this zoom uh, and there's also uh, one, ways to go ahead and write uh, ignores for regular expressions I've never had to do something like this this is something that af is a little bit like a little, little cray cray and uh, <laughs> that's the kids who's saying uh, but the last thing I wanted to talk about is that uh, certain certain times that you may want to ignore pass, we already showcased that, but uh, there are uh, other languages that you may want to add to our dictionary. So um, you can see here with our dictionaries where we set it up to do just English. It's set up by English by default, but you may want to add certain words that are related to TypeScript, Node, PHP, Go, Python. And we don't want to have to go and add all these words to our application so these are some of the items uh, to make our life a little bit easier that are available to add the programming language dictionaries now i could tell you that i work in typescript uh daily and i've never had to turn this on for typescript but it is worth mentioning it is here and um there's stuff a uh, couple it's quite verbose i guess what i'm trying to say so definitely take a look at the documentation but you're not going to really need it uh we pretty much covered everything we we needed to so uh as always guys thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it enjoyed it give it a thumbs up give it a share um support the channel hashtag that road to 100,000. it's appreciated there are links to my courses in the description below i'll see you guys next time bye hey guys thanks for watching the video don't forget to check out my latest course the 100 front end interview questions challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews smash that like and subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching bye